yeah, we all know the problems that obviously occurred during lockdown uh, or at the start of lockdown. And obviously as a council, we're working really hard to deal with that issue. But then as quick as we were dealing with that issue, we were dealing with what happens after lockdown and as part of the recovery. And um, I think you'll all agree that, um, and I've said this before, I don't know quite where I heard it from, but I didn't think of it myself, I can assure you that. But I think places, I think you can agree, places are defined by their town centre or village centres. And um, so with that in mind, we were very conscious that once we had the help with the reopening of the high streets and all the work and the communication that was done with various um, individual centres, whether they be, be um, Taunton at one extreme or is um, done so at the other extreme at the small end um, on helping ensure that they had everything that they thought they needed to reopen and um, I think we did that with some with great success and thank you for the team for doing that. One of the things then we looked at is well actually what do we do in the short term because there's going to be a short term issue if you've got people who still don't want to necessarily feel or don't feel safe going to the town centres um, they've got out the habit of going to town centres apparently it takes six weeks to change a habit um, and I must admit, I, you know, I stopped drinking flat whites every morning and haven't started again since, really. Um, so we looked at that and then we, might, we came up with through some, as I think the technical term is repurposing budgets, we came up with half a million pounds to help our town centres. And um, it came out quite, you know, quite quickly that you know, 200,000 was sort of allocated for Taunton and there was 100,000 for Minehead. 100,000 for Wellington and I think you can understand why those figures were that amount for each of those towns and then of course it doesn't take much of a calculation to figure there's a little bit left and there's some yeah, specific rural centres or smaller towns and villages um, that we need to look at so with that in mind I mean we've penciled in um, penciled in 25,000 for Porlock um, with that I think Lisa will probably briefly explain um, how that will be handled and obviously you've been having some conversations with that but that's enough for me because tonight's not about us talking it's about you talking to us so I'll hand over to we'll hand back to Craig who probably then hand over to Lisa thank you thanks very much Marcus yes yeah, so next on the agenda Lisa Redstone will give an introduction into the emergency town centre fund hi Lisa Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Lisa Redston. I'm the Economic Development Manager at Somerset Western Taunton Council. Um, so, as Marcus uh, just mentioned, this uh, is your official announcement that £25,000 has been granted to Porlock for the purpose of supporting those businesses in your town centres to be adaptable and resilient and to grow past COVID. Um, and to look at your town centres from an aesthetic point of view um, and if there are any improvements required there with the purpose of attracting people to use your neighbourhood retail centres, uh, be that visitors or be that local residents. Um, so uh, now we've let, uh, announced that officially, um, that how this will work is that uh, it's a grant, so and it will be granted to um, any particular body that you feel in your area, and this is where we really need your views, would be the right group or organisation to uh, be allocated that grant and to manage that grant on behalf of your local area. Um, in some areas, it's the town councils. In other areas, uh, there are local retail groups uh, that would like to look after it. Um, I'm aware in Porlock, you've got a, a visitor centre there as well. So um, we would appreciate some feedback from you on who you think the right organisation would be in your area that, uh, to actually manage this grant. Um, and the grant itself, uh, we would obviously expect a working group to be made around the grant to decide on how you would like to uh, spend it and the type of things you'd like to put in place to support your local uh, retail centre or business centre or, or however, however you would like to describe it. Um, so that's, that's where we're going at the moment. It'd be really good to get your feedback on, on the, the funding um, and also on, on the management of that funding. Um, but also we then want to, to talk to you about uh, what you feel during this meeting, what you feel might be some ideas that you might want to put in um, to uh, some of the type of interventions that could support your local um, retail centre or town centre or business centre. Uh, and, and some of the things that you think might help to improve it to attract local residents and users um, and visitors back into your businesses. Um, so. Craig, I don't know if you're happy for me to just go straight into opening up to the floor or do you want me to hand back to you? 
Uh, we can open up the floor, Lisa, <laughs> thanks. Great. So opening up the floor now for any comments or feedback or suggestions uh, of some things that you might already have thought of uh, that you think uh, you could use this funding to help you to deliver. Yeah, I, if I would, can uh, kick off as the district councillor, there are a number, as you know, we've got the Tourist Association and we've also got uh, Porlock Parish Council here. Uh, both organisations have got uh, proposals uh, which we're pretty much uh, oven baked, ready to go uh, to sort of uh, improve the village in sort of uh, economic development and trying to improve it for the uh, traders and the uh, village uh, for in the future. Uh, I don't know quite how much uh, information and detail you want here, but uh, the decision really will be to sort of how the uh, money is uh, split or divided between the two organisations, or indeed if it's given to, say, the parish council as a local government organisation, and then uh, redistributed from there on to other activities. And that's probably uh, somewhere a decision will have to be made on that at some point in time. Thank you, Andy. Um, Richard, yes, hi there. It's a question more than anything else. We, as well as the Town Council and the um, uh, Visitor Centre uh, that we have in Porlock, we also have, which actually the chairman of it is here as well, so I was, I was half waiting for him to come in and say this. Uh, we also have an economic, um, an economic plan group where we're planning uh, particularly the high street in, um, in Porlock, but not only the high street in Porlock, and it includes actually a couple of villages around the area. And my question at this point in time is, can it include other area, other villages in the immediate area? Which are, I'm not wanting to say that Porlock doesn't want it, but we do have other villages in the immediate area. Or are they, are they subject to a different request? Um, so uh, this particular fund is very much around our high streets, if you want to call it that. So we, we do understand that our high streets sometimes have branches off and, and slightly um, wider sort of secondary areas. So we're, we're open to thinking about those, but it is particularly around getting those people back into your, into your main centres. So I would say at this stage, it's unlikely that we would um, agree that it would be a good idea to spend any money further outside of Porlock. Um, one thing that we'll, we'll have to, to talk to you more about after this meeting is um, the development of a plan. But uh, Andy, I hear you say that there is already pretty much a, an oven ready plan, ready to go. Um, but we need to look at you about that plan. And, and what we'll do is once you've, just, once you've decided on what your plan is going to be, the expenditure of your 25,000, then um, SWT would have a look at those plans and just make sure that they meet the criteria of the fund. And at that point, we'd be able to pick up if anything was going slightly um, off target, uh, but it's good to have those conversations early on, Richard. So thank you for your question. I think the issue really is that the um, there's a discussion still underway. We have got from the parish council point of view, we are uh, fairly well uh, uh, well on the way in, in dis discussing, and we think we know where we're going. It still needs to be approved by the parish council, and that this is the direction we want to go. Uh, but as it heavily involves the uh, visitor centre, uh, there's still sort of discussions that involve them to make sure that uh, Debbie there is uh, uh, happy. And we are still at a very preliminary stage in some of the discussions that are taking place. And uh, we still need to sort of, uh, obviously we've got to make it best for everyone, uh, but the parish council is well aware of the uh, probably the best way to describe it, beautification of the high street. Uh, but there are obviously more uh, other, there are other pressing demands that may be pressed to put upon the monies as well, which um, we've got to hear from other people yet. So on one hand, we're pretty sure of what we want to do, or I, I believe we want to do, but there are still other demands uh, that have to be catered for so that those are um, taken into account before we sort of um, you know, start spending the dosh. Can you perhaps tell me whilst people are mulling that over, if, you can, if there's some sort of timeline on this and uh, wh when do we have to have a, a sort of uh, 
firm plan produced by, when's the money got to be spent by, uh, and such like. Maybe that would be helpful for everyone. Lisa, thank you. Absolutely, I'm happy to outline that. And, and what I will do following this, Andy, and, and is I will send over to whoever uh, would find it useful um, and please let us know if you'd like to see a copy but Andy I'll probably send it to you and then ask you if you'll distribute it but there'll be an email coming out which will lay out the criteria of the fund and a bit of a timeline so you'll have that in writing so you can share it with who you need to but for the purposes of tonight the timeline we're looking for um, short sharp immediate interventions so we're talking about the things that will help to save your businesses now um, the expenditure we would, we would expend the whole grant we would expect the grant to be spent within a 12 month period from the date that your funding agreement is signed and that will go along with your plan um, so by 12 month period we would look to hope that actually delivery and changes will be made on the ground um, absolutely this side of Christmas um, so if there are some short sharp interventions that you could lead with from your plan that would be great so we can start seeing some changes um, in terms of developing your plan, we've set for all of the areas um, an indicative two week time frame to come back with an indicative plan. And what we're talking about there is um, it needs to say that the type of project or type of intervention that you want to put in place. So you might have a very specific project about um, painting some railings um, that you know that you want to do and you costed it and you know how much it's going to cost so that can go in there but you might have some themes right you might want to say actually we want to do some promotional activity and we think we want to allocate about x amount of money towards it but we're not quite sure how much and exactly what the cost will be yet um, and it will need to have um, indicative start and finish dates for, for those different interventions that you're talking about uh, but that's pretty much it that's all we need and and I keep saying the word indicative at this stage because it needs to be your best shot as we currently speak and two weeks isn't a long time to get things signed off and it's not a long time to get out there and speak to businesses if that's what you want to do and go through the front doors and talk to people so we're aware of the fact that your indicative plan in the next two weeks um, will be a starter it will then enable us to sign off your funding agreement and get the money paid over to uh, the grant recipient whoever you decide that's going to be um, pretty much immediately once we've signed your funding agreement off so we're looking at quite a short time frame because we want the money to be out there working for our businesses not sat in, not sat in a bank account um, so that that's what I mean by indicative is that clear Andy at this stage I'm happy to have further conversations about this Yeah, I, I, that sounds uh, fairly, fairly straightforward. Yeah. Yeah. Could I ask a, a question of the group? Oh, if they, I don't know if somebody else is coming in then. Right. That's my fault. Hi. <laughs> Just quest two weeks from today to have this plan. Yep, why not? Let's go for it. Let's let's be ambitious and see how far we get. Um, okay. And, you know, we'll continue to talk with you during this time. So we're not just going to leave you on your own to do to do this. We'll keep checking in um, and seeing if there's any support or advice we can help you with um, over the two week period of time. So please call on us to help you. Um, but yes, let's go for it. Two weeks. And the funds flow will go from you directly to the recipient rather than through the through, in our case, the council or the visitor centre. You would want us to propose somebody to receive the funds rather than us receive it and pay it on to them? No, the plan is because we need to have a funding agreement with one organisation in your oh, area. Okay. So we need to be able to pay the whole lot to one organisation and then you would you would then um, uh, support makes it the easier. payments. Okay, yeah. I'm the treasurer of Porlock uh, Parish Council, so. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we'll be talking. <laughs> we'll be talking, yes, thank you. <laughs> Um, so I was just going to ask a question of the group, and I'm not sure um, of everybody on the group and, and where you're from and who you're representing, but um, just from the conversations you might have been having with local business owners or people that you know in the area, have you had any specific feedback about uh, anything that anyone may be struggling with as a, as a business or anything that they think should happen in your area? Maybe Debbie has more idea than us on this because she's talking to them fairly often. Mm. Um, yes, I, I can come in here. Um, I mean, obviously, I've had lots of conversations with businesses, you know, from from the outset. Um, and certainly when Nikki, Nikki's fund, the emergency fund was available in terms of signage, you know, I, I 
literally I think I mean Nikki and I worked on it to, at the last minute but I spoke to pretty much every business um, and got feedback and and I have copies of that feedback but I wasn't expecting I had no idea what the agenda was tonight so I can certainly um, come back with that feedback I mean it may but I'm sure it will have shifted um, but I mean Generally, I mean, across the board in Porlock, um, and obviously I don't know what research Andy's done in terms of all of the businesses, um, but um, we certainly haven't got as many of our local community members venturing down to the high street uh, because of our, you know, we've got a big influx of, of tourists at the moment, which is fantastic for our businesses. Uh, overall, they seem to be saying there's a lot of people actually in the village, but not going into shops. Um, and without canvassing the tourists, I, I have no idea why they're not going in the shops. And, and I'm hearing this across the board. Um, I mean, certainly a lot of the points that people have come back to me with really are it's a bigger picture than what we're talking about here tonight. So I think it's it, we've got to go back now. We know or certainly now I know the criteria of um, the, the, the loose guidelines for this grant we can now ask specific questions of our businesses um, and get a proper feel and, and obviously we're going to have to be pretty hot off the press on this so but i mean maybe the the parish council has already done all of this research you know as andy has indicated uh, as you know debbie it's really been uh, based on uh, hancock's plan uh, and that's really beautification of the village rather than perhaps the more practical uh, business uh, aspects that you're referring to and are as equally as important. Uh, so um, both, are, both are completely valid and it's a matter of merging both views together to get the correct result on this is, is my view but um, others will have a different view on this maybe. I, I mean without a doubt I mean and 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 I think we're, we're probably going to have to call a, a, a collective meeting <laughs> to say P so um, we can get moving on this and do what's absolutely right for all of our businesses and, and the village centre, not just making it beautiful. Um, I mean, you've come up with recently your marketing plan, for example. It may be that there's some elements of that marketing plan that uh, need some investment. Um, there's a whole ro load of things in that which should probably need uh, some investment to them and that's got to be incorporated in there. So to come back to yourself, Lisa, yes, there is a bit, obviously we're talking about two separate groupings here. Uh, one is the parish council, one is the much more business orientated. We've had uh, a, a general conversation before, but we've actually got to tighten it up quite considerably before we can actually sort of say, yes, we've definitely got um, uh, expenditure for you know, which which would be good use of public money, basically. Uh, but we're we're pretty as far as the to go down the beautification route. There are some good ideas there and suggestions in a very uh, well written document. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily incorporate the views from um, the traders, uh, which um, have yet to be really built into this on a practical basis. If that helps, is that fair, Debbie? Yeah, I, I think that's that's absolutely fair. Um, I mean, I'm always going to be driven about, you know, what is best for our businesses as well as our community, uh, as I as I know um, the whole of the parish council is. Um, we did do a survey of our businesses back long before I put together, I mean, I put together a business support plan specifically for the Paulock Vale businesses on how we recover from COVID. So we can certainly revisit those comments um, but I think in this case, we, we need to very much target um, our high street businesses. You know, they're, they're key critical. And, you know, maybe then secondary, you know, our accommodation providers, because that has a knock on effect. So. Um, Malcolm, you need to unmute yourself. That's it. Uh, I think a lot of people at the moment are worried about this second wave the government's going on about. And everybody's talking of 
uh, hospitals being used in from October onwards and what have you. Uh, I've just booked a camping motorhome holiday in the Scottish borders uh, last week, only to find now that Aberdeen is in lockdown. Uh, I looked at going up to Scotland via uh, the Yorkshire Dales and uh, Myvelroyd and this sort of thing, and there looking at lockdowns around Manchester and you think if that's starting now is that going to come this way uh, we keep seeing on the television news that uh, campsites are, are doing pretty well they're chock-a-block I had great difficulty organizing my six or seven campsites um, to do a month's holiday in Scotland but we, we keep reading, seeing on the television that hotels are struggling and that nobody's going to stay in hotels. And I just had a week in uh, Cornwall a couple of weeks ago and you go into a pub and people are not quite sure whether they've got to sign in, they've got to register with an app and you sit there at a deserted table and somebody will approach you do you want a drink do you want a meal um, you go into shops and some shops want you to wear a mask others are just free for you to go along other people aren't handling cash they want uh, a flash of a credit card even for a simple um, ice cream costing 150 they want it on a, a credit card um, I think we the, the sort of planning that we're probably looking at is a little bit more sort of long term I, I'm not quite sure how you try getting a lot of visitors suddenly to come to Porlock Thank can you, I Malcolm. Yeah, thank <laughs> Deborah. Yeah, please do. Hi. Um, okay, so if I can, I can just respond. Um, I, I mean, certainly, it, I can give you a bit of a snapshot on where we are right now with our, all of our accommodation providers. So pretty much between now and almost through to the end of September, nearly all of our accommodation providers, our bed and breakfast, our guest houses, and our self-catering cottages are fully booked. It, which is obviously fantastic but I mean obviously a lot of them are operating at reduced capacity in order to meet COVID-19 guidelines. Um, I think Malcolm you know you, you, you'll be going in and out of our shops. I think there, there, is, there can be no ambiguity I think no matter what business you go in in Porlock about what is needed in terms of the expectation from visitors going in um, I mean, thirdly, what I will also say is obviously I, the visitor centre uh, staff, we have kept the information of businesses uh, updated and that's on our website and I've sent it to, to Debbie to put on your website. Yeah. So in terms of information for visitors, I'm, I'm not sure how much more that we can actually do in terms of m making everybody aware um, of, of how we're operating in Porlock Vale. But there's, there's a really quick little snapshot. I also suspect that our, our, we're getting visitors who are not our normal visitors to Porlock. So we've got a lot of new people coming into the village and hopefully they will come back, you know, next year. But we've, as you know, historically, we move into September, October and we get a different type of visitor. You know, we get the older visitors coming, the walkers, etc., who will come outside of school holidays. Right. So um, I, I don't know whether no. that just helps answer some of the points that you raised, Malcolm, in terms yeah. of well, what's going on. I, I, in I know a lot about the retail in the high street because we run our saddlery shop there for 33 years since 1972 so I've watched the high street go up and down. Uh, I'm also a victim of the uh, foot and mouth uh, from 2000 so I know what it's like not to see people in your shop but at the end of the day there's got to be something to attract the visitors and uh, 
I, I think that's we, we haven't got a castle like Dunster, but we if the the idea I I like is that some years ago, uh, watch it suddenly reinvented itself by a lick of paint, a bit more signage, tidying the place up, and now it seems to be thriving. Whereas I don't know if there's anybody from Watch It there, but that 20 year ago, it was quite a miserable place, but it seemed to reinvent itself. And uh, I think that's possible in Porlock that if we have a sort of tidy up campaign and some new signage and uh, everybody pulls together, it's, it's possible to do something. Thank you, Malcolm. Um, Andy, you've got your hand raised. Yeah, it was a quick one really, because I tried to pull out the bones from uh, some of Malcolm's stuff there, and some of it was uh, the message to uh, behaviour in the shops and so on, and it's not really from this particular ground, but I think you're also talking about the still, and I know Nikki, now it's nice to see you put a face to the name, was uh, heavily involved in the sort of the signage and what can be done around the village and sanitizers and all that sort of business, and, it, and we haven't to be honest with you, haven't thought any further uh, uh, on that subject. Uh, from what Malcolm was saying, maybe there should be some more discussion on that. Um, but how, I know you, Lisa, when we were talking the other day, it's obviously a fairly challenging sort of um, fun to touch into, but um, maybe there's something there you could give us a hint and where, where others, have, um, others have taken advantage of it where perhaps we haven't, which you could perhaps point us in the right direction. Absolutely, Andy. So let's just uh, clarify for the for the rest of the the uh, attendees tonight. So um, right at the beginning, before the retail opened, um, we were uh, offered some funding from the European Regional Development Fund um, to support the safe reopening of our high streets, and it was very much around temporary public realm interventions, signage, um, hand sanitizer stations. There are, we've had lots of really good ideas of how to make people feel safe, how to support businesses to, to make their customers feel safe and how to make our public realm safe. Um, however, the, the criteria for that particular fund is very, very tight. I and mean, we're not the only district council across the country having intended a webinar who feels exactly the same way. So it's very limited on what we can spend it on. They're very strict. Um, so signage, yes, anything if we need to uh, hire barriers to cordon off bits of the pavement and road, absolutely fine. Hand sanitizers are in. But we, for example, suggested that we could put bike racks in place in some of our neighborhood retail centers um, to support that active travel, but bike racks are out. So basically that fund, anything that would, is not removable after the 31st of March next year, we can't fund. So bike racks is as an example of that. Um, so it is tricky, but there is still funding available in that pot that we could look to draw down and claim. So um, if there's anything, we can't provide any signage or support or hand sanitizer stations for inside businesses. That's the responsibility of the business. But if you think putting up extra things to keep people safe, so hand sanitizer stations or different signage, um, or you want to do a promotional video or, of the inside of some of your businesses so people know what, sometimes people don't go because they don't know what to expect. So some people are doing promotional videos showing the inside of businesses. So there are ways to, to get people to come through the doors of your business premises, but to do so in a safe way. Um, and so that would be outside the 25K. So anything that you think of that we know that we could cover from the other pot of funding we've got, we'll, we'll use the other pot of funding we've got so we can keep your 25,000 purely focused on the things that you want it to be spent on. Well, certainly the uh, videos, perhaps for Debbie, would be uh, quite a useful one, uh, a run down the high street and in and out of the shops, because that acts as a kind of promotional film of the high street, uh, uh, would be that, that, I don't know, Debbie's the expert on this, but uh, that, that would be quite a useful bit of kit to um, cook, cook up because we've got, an, what, Debbie's got an excellent uh, Facebook site where we, what, reach 18, 20,000 people on it? Sorry, uh, over 16,000. Six, well, call me a liar for two. Uh, so, um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a good reach, so yeah. So by putting, by putting, by putting a, a sort of a clip of film on of the high street and uh, showing the safety processes, emphasising the kind of COVID side of things, 
that actually could be uh, a really useful top tip there from you, Lisa. So uh, we'll look into that. Thank you. Okay. I, I, I don't want to get too sucked into the minutiae detail, but um, the one thing that several all of the businesses suggested when we were talking about spending Nikki's fund was that um, that there was like a, a, a template, um, almost like a, a, a sort of a, a certification that the visitor centre or the traders all worked on, so that they all adhered to a set set of guidelines um, in terms of making sure people felt safe. Um, I mean, as you know, Andy, you know I. I, all of my staff were furloughed during lockdown and so th there was just only so much capacity I had. But I can certainly revisit um, some of those things that the businesses asked for. But I agree, I think video, lots of photographic evidence, I mean certainly we can use our website. Um, and you know, I, I think also, you know, that there's some really good partnership to be had with EMPA out of this because anything that expands and we we seem to be working together and promoting wider Exmoor because we're all you know we're all working together here. Um, so I, I think without a doubt um, that there's some. I think our, uh, without a doubt the survey results will give us lots of food for thought. Um, and I think it's just down to to the visitor centre and the parish council to work together on how we can get a structured plan together ASAP and submit so that we know our businesses and High Street is benefiting in every possible way. Thank you, Deborah. Um, Marcus, you had a question, I believe. Yeah, thank you. It was, um, thank you, Craig. It was just a couple of things that have been said and I thought, oh, I'd like to know a little bit more if I can. Um, I think Deborah talked about um, accommodation providers being full up to with, uh, the end of September's even, even better but you said it reduced capacity so I'd like to know what that reduced capacity is because obviously in my head we know what buttons is reduced capacity is but that's easy when it's one place when you've got loads of different individual um, accommodation providers it'd be interesting to know you know are they running at reduced capacity and if so you know is it just what if it's a hotel or B&B is it just one room they've stopped or have they just stopped doing breakfast and things like that um and uh, I'd also, and I don't want again, I understand not wanting to go into minutiae, but some of the um, beautification things that Andy has talked about, it'd be interesting to just have a couple of examples of which of them, just so you know, we never know, it might, there might be ideas that could work for other places as well. And what I would say is don't underestimate um, the beauty of Porlock for someone who doesn't live in West Somerset and doesn't live in Porlock. Um, I send people to Porlock all the time, I send them to Delverton, I do send quite a few to um, Valley of the Rocks, but technically it's still in Exmoor, even if it's in North Devon. Um, and so don't, and you know, Porlock has a pull. And for people who have, and I think there are more visitors from away, and it's interesting what Deborah said about new new people being here. Um, but I think there's a real opportunity, for real opportunity to um, attract a diff, attract new people who maybe had never come to, never dreamed of coming to West Somerset before. So, um, yeah, but I'd be interested to know about that reduced capacity. And the other, only other question, I, I don't want to get drawn into parking, but it'd be interesting to know your views if we can keep it brief on it, on the free parking and how that's working out in Porlock. Thank you, Craig. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Deborah. Thank you. If I could just ask you to unmute, lovely, thank you. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, the thing, I feel I'm dominating um, and I'd rather not, um, but I, I can come back and, and sort of bounce back. Uh, certainly Marcus, you're, in terms of reduced capacity of our accommodation providers, I don't have the detail per se on everyone, but for example, one of our campsites is, in terms of camping, they are only operating at a third of their normal capacity. Um, a lot of our, and again, I can't, name exact ones but you know comments that have come back you know people have shut rooms down they're allowing in terms of self-catering they're allowing two days between people coming into self-catering rather than people staying say for seven days um they're only staying for five days so they can shut down for 48 hours for cleaning and to reduce risk etc um and some accommodation providers have closed bedrooms um and if i can just shifty quickly onto the parking scenario 
Um, I was contacted today and certainly speaking to the traders in the village and I don't know whether Malcolm and anybody else from the parish council, um, the free parking without a doubt has proved a huge success and without a doubt has enabled people to stay longer, they're not clock watching um, and I have had a request today is whether something that some, maybe Somerset Council would consider perhaps free parking on a Saturday or something. Um, the free parking, a hundred percent success for our businesses. Thank you, Deborah. I did see Richard raise his hand just before I um, go to you, Andy. Richard, did did you want to add anything? So, I mean, it, it, it's linked to what Andy said and what Andy said earlier. Uh, part of our oven ready plan, as it were, that we were, that, that Andy mentioned earlier, is is signage uh, redoing and um, uh, much improved improving the signage, in fact, possibly changing it quite considerably. But of course, what we'd like to do is see that signage still there at the end of it. Um, is, that, is that okay if, if this is signage that will last 55 years rather than five months? <laughs> because you're wanting something very quick. Well, we can, put, we can do the signages quick, but we don't want to take them down at the end of it. Okay, so just to really be clear for you, Richard, the, the signage that we were talking about um, was the COVID stay safe guidance signage that you would have had up um, put around Porlock. Yes. That was from a fund which is um, specifically around public realm safety measures to keep people able to socially distance. Uh, okay. that's, <clears throat> that's the fund that we can't put anything in place which is going to last more than until March next year, which was the date they gave us. Your 25,000 that we were talking about earlier on uh, in the, in the uh, meeting, um, that is absolutely for things which you think will have a long-term benefit. Okay. Um, and so we do ask as part of your funding, when you're considering what projects and interventions you do, mm. you have, you, you consider as you're going along um, that the number of businesses that will benefit from it um, and for how long. Um, so you may not want to plow 20, 20 of your £25,000 into an event that lasts a day because that's not going to help. So it's looking at uh, that, that how many businesses will benefit from the things that you're doing and trying to make as many businesses as benefit as possible. Um, and also we absolutely want you to look at the long-term sustainability and legacy, legacy of what you're putting in. Okay. Um, so um, yes, if you're going to put in signage, it's going to look, look at wayfinding signage potentially, or some uh, signage that, which is targeted at your visitor economy, um, then absolutely we would like that to last as long as it possibly can and benefit for as long as possible. Okay, very good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. Um, Andy, hi. Uh, yes, uh, Marcus, you were asking uh, about the parking and can I just totally reiterate uh, Debbie's uh, points about that. It's been absolutely essential to the uh, traders and if it was to carry on for uh, Saturdays or uh, for the, for, till the end of the year, that would be a massive benefit uh, to, to us all. Um, whilst I'm not so fussed about this, there's also a lot of criticism about the types of machine that are there because they're really ancient. You can't just tap card it, you can't call in, uh, you have to put coins in. So there's always the drama about getting coinage before you can stick it in to get, you know, usual routine. Uh, so updating of machines uh, would be a huge bonus to us. And um, so, so that's the parking, essential. I, I reiterate everything that uh, Debbie said there. As far as the uh, beautification aspects go, it's really, uh, I suppose one could uh, clap, um, up, up it to sort of soft landscaping, I suppose, and giving the village a purpose. So one of our sort of local heroes, in fact, is uh, a woman called Ada Lovelace, who in fact was fundamental in designing the computer, uh, rather than uh, it went off in the, in the way days of old when it off, when the, the Babbage or somebody got the credit for it. Well, actually, it was Ada Lovelace who was all credited for it. We, we've got the uh, Ada Lovelace Centre, but um, in uh, Dolverton, they've uh, stolen Lorna Doon from us by putting a statue up, but that proves to be an enormously attractive item for people to go and uh, uh, see, tourists to go and see. There may be an option, and this has got to be passed by the village, if that makes sense. Uh, for an Ada Lovelace uh, statue, for example. Uh, soft uh, trees, trees in planters down the high street. Um, we've identified four or five spots 
where potentially they could go in small trees just to soften up the, the, the landscaping in the in the street. Um, uh, rail, railings, which at the moment, which belong to public and private, uh, it may be that by painting those to make them more uh, consistent throughout the village, that sort of thing could be useful. Uh, um, blue plaques on people's houses, you know, even if it's something like nobody important lived here, which I think somebody else has mentioned. Uh, that's okay because we could put those up and it gives a trail around the village for tourists to walk around and you know that some somebody happened to live there. I mean this has got to be researched and I wouldn't like to say these are firm suggestions but these are pretty well thought through by other peoples. Uh, I don't know the details but it would be relatively easy to um, uh, ramp up on and to come back to the signage which uh, Richard was talking about hoping to use the COVID signage uh, for the future actually the, the high street is filled with unnecessary signs and duplication of signs a lot of them belonging to uh, highways but it's just a matter of combining uh, uh, signs onto a single pole uh, so that we don't get sort of five pups posts in the very narrow pavements all of which have got a sign sticking out of them where actually probably two would do it or one placed or a sign placed up on a wall would uh, do the necessary traffic direction so there's lots of sort of um, suggestions like that which um, because I know we're now working on a highways issue in that last comment no doubt that will fall into all sorts of bloody poo traps but um, but you understand the general theme of trying to clean up the high street and making it more attractive uh, to the visitor. Uh, perhaps that gives you some points, Marcus, that we were looking at. Thank you, Andy. Uh, Nikki, you did have your hand raised. Malcolm, I'll be with you shortly. It was only just a quick one because you were talking about dividing it between the tourism and the retail side of things. I just wondered if you were also thinking of aligning to your coastal community team economic plan, which you already have. And I know Chris is here. So it was just a thought around that if there was anything there that you could potentially consider as well. Thank you, Nikki. Uh, Malcolm. Um... Uh, yeah, what? What would help us immensely is if we can keep the speed limit in the high street down to 20. Uh, the police a couple of weeks ago put up some flashing signs uh, and they removed them after a week and I asked what the effect of that was and the answer I got back was Oh, we put them up hoping people will see what speed they're doing and possibly slow down. Uh, there's a great movement throughout the country at the moment to try and make high streets and residential areas 20 miles an hour. Because if you hit somebody at 30 miles an hour plus, you kill them. If you hit them at 20, they survive. And as we've got a high street which is the A39 and it's narrow in parts and the pavements are narrow where you have to step off them they're not even wide enough to walk on uh, it would be a great bonus if people when they came to Porlock realized they could walk <coughs> in relatively safety along these paths and roads about 10, 12 years ago, I went with Alan Wright, the previous chairman, to a national park meeting where we met the people uh, called Hamilton Bailey, who do this shared high street type scheme. And they actually designed us a plan for Porlock High Street, taking out the pavements and all the rest and putting a few trees around. Uh, but again, there was no more money for that but when they built Meadow Hayes five, six years ago now, part of those features of, of Hamilton Bailey were put into that stretch of road. It's a bit like the Exmoor gateways that they built uh, 20, 30 odd year ago at a cost of about £20,000, just trying to slow the vehicles down as they go into Wedden Cross and Exford. But people learn to drive 
fussed over those. But if we could have a mandatory, enforceable 20 mile an hour limit, we'd benefit greatly from it. Thank you, Malcolm. Hi, Lisa. Uh, Malcolm, I'll just come back on that. It's an interesting idea, and it's not the first time I've heard that from, from our neighbourhood retail centres. Um, I was on a, a webinar uh, last week, uh, which was a, nation, a national webinar based around the safety funding that we were talking, which Deb, you're, when you talk about it, you talk about Nikki's fund, so that's what I'm talking about here. Um, and they were talking, uh, it was a different authority, quite similar to, to Somerset Western Taunton, actually, in terms of tart size and coastal and rurality. Um, and they had actually done that for some of their schemes. They had uh, been able to reduce the speed limit down to 20 miles an hour. Um, and where they needed, they had big gateway signage over the road. So it was a big banner across the road that said, welcome to, I can't remember the area, um, 20 miles an hour um, and, and stay safe. And it had that COVID messaging on there. So I know that it's been done in other parts of the country. Um, to progress that, um, and even the idea of doing that, um, especially while we're still in social distancing mode, um, it would be a call into the county council, potentially from the parish council, it'd be a call into the county council highways team to ask them what type of costs they may incur um, and whether the highways team could officially make it a 20 mile an hour enforceable zone or whether you could just put banners up saying it's 20 miles an hour and encouraging people to go 20 miles an hour even if it isn't enforceable but I think a, a call into the highways team from the parish council and I will wish you the best of luck that you get straight through and you get somebody that will be very helpful um, to, might give you some ideas of the costs and, and the process involved in doing that and if it's doable if it sounds doable and we just need to use some funding for signage from the, the the safety fund then absolutely we can look to support you with that thank you thank you lisa um i was going to say you probably don't need to uh mute yourself because i'm just very conscious of time fast approaching so um if you would like to just explain kind of uh, next steps and uh, way forward that would be great thank you okay this probably won't take me 10 minutes so we may have some time left at the end and um, so really next steps from here I think I alluded to this earlier on um, we will continue having conversations um, primarily through the parish council probably the easiest way to do it to talk to you about the development of your your fund of your plan your indicative delivery plan that we would like back from you within uh, the next two weeks um, and then to uh, I'll send you a copy or send, send whoever you decide if you decide that the funding is going into the parish council to be redistributed that's fine um, I'll send the parish council a copy of the funding agreement to start looking over to make sure we're happy with the terms and conditions. Um, and then it, it's just a case then that we will continue once you have the grant to be in contact with you to find out how you're spending it and the type of activities that you're doing. Um, so those are the next steps from here, really. Um, and that's pretty much it. I told you it wouldn't take me 10 minutes. Thank you. Did anybody want any last words? I think uh, if I could just um, pass on to the uh, sort of SWT and uh, the council, uh, it's just sort of a thank you for remembering the rural communities. <laughs> we're, we're always very conscious that uh, stuff gets spent on the, obviously on the larger populations for all the proper reasons, and I, that's not an argument. It's, uh, but it's uh, very nice to see some money coming out to the five of us out here in the sort of stick sort of thing and especially the most western stick of the lot which is sort of occasionally drifts off down the channel and sort of wonders whether it should be part of Glamorgan or something so this is uh, extremely uh, useful and very helpful and I'm sure we'll be able to use um, the monies and your advice uh, extremely well here in uh, in Porlock so thank you very much Marcus and uh, Lisa who's sort of running this uh, sort of show sort of thing so that's much appreciated. Yeah, thank you very much. I think, uh, Chris, yeah, if you'd like to unmute. Yes, thank you. And I'd just like to endorse Andy's observations and thanks for thinking of us. Um, we've got long, short and or long, medium and short term plans for both uh, Porlock, the High Street and the Vale. And I don't want to derail any of the discussions that Andy may have with Lisa and um, Debbie in developing this short term plan. but. You know, in those conversations, 
if in looking at some of the medium and longer term observations or, or proposals that we're thinking about, you've got any suggestions as to how we might source funding for those, that would be really useful. And I, you know, I appreciate that there's a, a relatively short fuse on this, and this £25,000 you know, needs to be invested in a way which is going to really improve things for the local traders and, and bring back economic activity. Um, but many of these other things that we're contemplating um, will obviously will do that, but there's a much longer time frame associated with those. And they obviously are not going to be part of, um, you know, the immediate submission for this, uh, for this 25,000. So again, just to thank you for thinking of us. And um, if you'll bear us in mind in the future, we'd appreciate that too. Thank you, Chris. Thank you for those comments. Um, and you're right. And, and so when you're thinking about how you're going to spend your 25K, um, you don't have to limit your thinking. And I'm sure you, you, it sounds like you've already got some plans. If there are other things outside of that, that you would like to look for funding for, um, then we've got an economic de development team at Somerset Western Taunton. And there may be other funding available out there that we could, we know about, uh, which might be national or regional funding, that we might be able to recognise when we look at your other plans um, and to see if there's anything that we could uh, point you in the right direction of. Um, and of course, you know, we'll continue our conversations with you going forward as an economic development team um, and wherever we can work together with you, we uh, we'll do our very best. That's very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Just, Marcus. Yeah, of course you can. Can I, can I just come in quickly? I mean, um, yeah, thanks for the th thanks for the thanks, Andy. But I would just sort of want to say that, you know, the form of where Somerset still exists, but the form of where Somerset Council area, um, you know, you've got district councillors and there's Andy De Andy and Paul Lock, there's Nick up in Dalverton, um, there's myself and Peter, there's myself and Peter. Um, in between, in between Minehead and Watch It, obviously, and then of course there's the Watch It ones, and they, we, the drum is banged very loudly for those areas. So it's not, you know, it, so thanks to and all those councillors who do who do that. And I think just finally, I think when touching on what Lisa was just saying there is one of the I think one of the things we're lacking on maybe, particularly in the former West Somerset area, is. And I like the fact that Andy used oven bake schemes rather than shovel ready schemes um, because they're not necessarily involved digging holes in the ground, although there are some schemes that we need diggers rather than shovels for. Um, but it would be not, yeah, we need to start formulating them, whether it be, whether they be big, small. Um, what we were saying about Hamilton Bailey earlier and the shared spaces, I think I went to those presentations before and I, you know, and I argue that actually Watch It already is a shared space the way the road is there. Um, I don't think Paul Lock's quite in that situation, but um, good luck on the 20 mile an hour limit. Um, I think what you do need with that is local support. And I think one of the things that they've struggled before the, with that is um, how few people actually care for a 20 mile an hour speed limit when you talk and consult the general public. So it's about getting the people of Paul Lock to all want it and um that would be a prior that would that's how you work on that one so but again i'd just like to also just thank everybody for attending and i'll shut up there thank you very much marcus well i think actually um that that's a wrap thank you very much for um taking I'm not on mute, am I? Am I on mute? You can all hear me. <laughs> That's fine, thank that you. That's right. I just thought Malcolm wanted might have wanted to come in forever, but we've still got five minutes, so we can squeeze okay. it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, the, the beauty of Porlock is, with, with this plan, we've got our own teams of painters, fixers, tractor drivers, diggers, so any money you give us, will be spent actually on the signage rather than paying somebody to do it all. So we benefit that way and that we hopefully get greater value than having to pay uh, tradesmen to uh, do the work. Everybody's gone dead. <laughs> no, we're still here. Thank yeah. you very much, Malcolm. Okay. Um, um, Take two. Uh, thanks very much, uh, everybody, for attending, taking time out of, of your evening for this webinar. It's been really, really valuable. Um, I think that's it. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Um, 
if anybody does have any other questions, there is an email address you can email us at. It's opening high streets at somersetwestandtaunton.gov.uk. Sorry, it's not the shortest of email addresses. Um, but thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you. cheers now. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.